Hello, uh, I'm the ICANN program coordinator. My name is uh, Louis Larouche, and I'm going to give you a, a presentation about uh, what we do with, in the ICANN program. Normally, we would give it uh, during the open house, a few groups of parents coming in with uh, questions. We might take questions later uh, in a Zoom session or something uh, one evening. If not, uh, we'll take them through email and uh, phone calls, the old, good old-fashioned way. So the ICANN program, what is it? It stands for Innovative Computer Applications and Networking Program. It's a computer concentration. And the students um, learn to do a large variety of things from basic, you know, learning uh, the method, how to type, uh, to coding very complex things, to doing 3D design like you see right now behind me. They can do 3D animations from scratch. These are all projects they did at the uh, grade 9 level a couple of years back, but we still, you know, use the same software and have the same types of projects. So these, believe it or not, were all designed by students in grade 9, and they're examples of what we can do with uh, Blender, which is a 3D design program. It's free, it's open source, and uh, there's a lot of good tutorials online and that uh, we came up with uh, in-house uh, to teach the students how to use it. Uh, one of our goals would be to create a 3D uh, animated story eventually where uh, several groups of students work on different bits and pieces and then we put them all together in one big video at the end, but we're uh, not there yet. So the next slide. You all wonder about the uh, academic entrance requirements. For ICANN, there's no additions or uh, tryouts. It's all based on report cards and in the past, our entry exams. This year we don't know if we're doing that at the time of uh, uh, recording this, so that information will be online on our website uh, soon or at the same time this video is online. Uh, this year we're going to ask for report cards from grade 5, so the report cards that have all the uh, semesters for grade 5, grade 6, they're not out yet and it's different students do different things in different schools at different times of the year, so it's not a good uh, Thing to ask for at this time. So there are entry exams. Uh, we don't know yet, but they will be, that information will be posted on our website. So good grades mean better chance of getting into the program, obviously. The curriculum, what we do, well, it's a buffet of different things. Uh, basically, students will be asked to try different things. It's a good idea to learn very quickly if you're good at coding or if you don't like coding whatsoever so you don't go to the next level in college and take computer science because you will have to do a lot of coding in computer science so if you prefer uh, other types of things that we do like 3d design animation making games uh, although making games uh, there's coding involved but you could be more about uh, the story making the stories or uh, designing the uh, artwork in a game or stuff like that Okay, so we do a lot of uh, application design and programming. At the lower grade levels, it's with uh, basic things like Scratch and Code.org, which are blocked base. Then we move on towards uh, grade 9 and later to uh, actual uh, programming languages like Python and Android, iOS, games, etc. A lot of web design lower grade levels, higher grade levels, so using those programming languages. Graphics art, a lot of Photoshop and Design Illustrator. Digital photography, of course. 3D design and animation, I already showed you a video before. So Blender, Inventor Pro, etc. Game units, they build 2D, so you know, two dimension games that have the, the characters, the sprite go up or down or left and right. They don't, they're not in 3D. And then 3D based games, but they learn to do that in Unity 3D. So coordinates, objects, where are they in the space? They also have to, uh, well, they have to, they are uh, asked to take apart robots and put them together, or computers, or Raspberry Pis, uh, M-Bots, Lego Mindstorms, and even actual full-on uh, first robotics competition with actual robots that actually accomplish tasks, kind of like in a, you know, auto plant where a robot would be moving a part into uh, another part and stuff like that. So they are doing that as well. And then the new media component, which is anything that's got to do with video and audio recording, 
editing uh, video clips and audio clips, broadcasting, publishing it online, promotion and social medias. So a lot. We do a lot and we keep adding to the list because uh, it changes very often, every 18 months. Normally, there's a new programming language that's used or there's one that's not so popular anymore. We try to stay current with what's going on in uh, the world at large. These are just a few pictures and a video after of some of what we do. So you see behind those students uh, a few Lego Mindstorm robots. In some grade schools, uh, we have them as well. So just we did some more advanced projects probably. And again, and this is from the first robotics competition. It's a video of our team competing in Montreal. That was uh, at uh, the Olympic Stadium. So we're Team 7053, that robot over here, and we are competing against teams from all over Quebec, Ontario, the rest of Canada, the States, the world even. There were teams from Brazil and France at that competition, uh, Hawaii. Um, so we compete against uh, other, it's not always high school level, There's sometimes it's a technical program at the college level or uh, university level even. So we have six weeks, six to eight weeks to design a robot from scratch from the moment we're told what the format of the competition will be that year. So it's, it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of motivated students who stay at lunch and sometimes they come in after school or on a pedagogical day or a weekend to work on finishing, completing the robot. So as you can see, they're going to grab a disc right in front of us bring it back and go put it onto another uh, window. We lost sight of our robot. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Fees, I can fees. Uh, we have uh, been between 1,000 to 1,200, even as, as high as 1,400 at the very beginning, but this, this is our 10th year. The fees tend to stay pretty stable. They go up or down a little bit every year, but uh, it's $1,050 uh, at this time, this year, and that repeats the following year, so it's $1,000 thereabouts ballpark per year. Uh, that includes a deposit, so if we send you an acceptance letter at the end of the process, uh, we'll ask for a deposit to reserve the spot for your child uh, for the, uh, when they're in grade 7 or uh, secondary 1 the following year. We provide for that amount of money. All the students received a refurbished laptops from the ICANN, uh, from the ICANN program. So we provide the laptop with the software on it. We have Windows 10 on one side and a version of Linux on the other with all the software we need to uh, do the different types of projects we do. So that includes you know, licenses for uh, Photoshop Illustrator and Design. Microsoft Office, that's provided by the school board. Uh, we have also you know, different types of software, Minecraft Education, the Lego Mindstorm software, Scratch and Blender, etc. Some of them uh, we need licenses for. We are your specialists, coaches. Think of them as coaches that come in to coach advanced skills to your children. So it could be computer programming, coding at a higher level than I can do, or 3D game design or different things that um, they're very good at and they can show our students quickly uh, how to do. And of course, if we provide the laptops, we have our own Wi-Fi network, internet connection. We have uh, high definition projectors, 3D printers. I forgot 3D printers before. So we are now asking the children to design an object in 3D in software and then we can actually print it with a 3D printer that will print it in a type of plastic. It's PLA. There's other types, but that's the main one we use because it's not harmful um, to your children. There's Lego Mindstorm, ZV3 Robotics, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi kits that we use to do all sorts of do-it-yourself projects. Could be a, you know, a video surveillance camera. Could be an alarm system. It could be weather station. It could be uh, the brains of a mini um, uh, remote controlled car or boat or things of that nature and Arduino kind of does the same thing as a Raspberry Pi but it's a 
for different purposes. So that's the fees. The schedule. We see your uh, child eight hours a week. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have an ICANN uh, session in the afternoon, two hours a week. Uh, four sessions of two hours a week, sorry. And um, I will have two schedules to show you after this slide to compare what a general study student in a concentration program sees on their schedule, okay? Um, the most important thing is at the end, in secondary four and five, they will meet all the aspects uh, necessary to complete, uh, to get their diploma, their high school diploma, including the options. So they can take iMath, they can take the science, the chemistry, the physics in secondary four and five. The only thing that we can't offer as an option is the French. French, uh, the only level we can offer when the students are in a program is the French enriched. So uh, there's no French as a second language basic, and there's no uh, mother tongue. There's no French langue maternelle. It's only the middle uh, level, which is French enriched. And uh, that concludes that part. If I show you the different schedule, this is the schedule of a student in the general studies program. So they have four periods a day. This is a 10-day schedule, so at the top, the top row is day one through ten so the first week would be Monday to Friday day five then the second week Monday on day six to Friday on day ten four periods a day so two in the morning they're 73 minutes long and then two in the afternoon also 73 minutes long so they have four periods a day 73 minutes it's pretty straightforward with a lunch hour pretty long lunch hour they're good then let's look at the one that you're interested in concentration program so the mornings are the same, two periods in long, the 73, period, well, 73 minutes period in the morning, same thing. Then there's a short one in the afternoon. It's short because it's not 73 minutes. It's from 111 to 156. That means that they're, that's a short period. The teachers have to compress what they do very, uh, to be able to uh, get all their uh, material in. And then uh, in the afternoon, we are interested in our blocks. So you can see there's uh, four blocks a week from day one to five of two hours. So that's, what, uh, that's when we have them. The Wednesdays are different. They're f like the general studies. So they have four long 73-minute uh, periods on those days. The rest of the time, they have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. They have that I that I can concentration block in the afternoon. And that uh, basically is the difference. If I go back to the first, the first one, general studies, four periods a day, straightforward. Then special programs, we get the two in the morning, the short one in the afternoon, except on Wednesdays where it's four periods a day. And then the concentration program block in the afternoon. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, I kept it short, kept it brief, and now I'm going to welcome a student that graduated from the ICANN program a few years ago. She's back as a coach uh, for the last two years. Her name is Allison, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her experience in the ICANN program. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Allison, and I'll be talking to you about my experience, uh, my five years in the ICANN program. So. Um, what I really like about this program is that you start off in secondary one learning a basic knowledge about a bit of everything. So you do some game design, you do some coding in Scratch and Code.org, you also do Photoshop, Illustrator, Graphic, Design, you even do, uh, we had, I remember, well, in my year we had one dedicated day, so I think it was every Tuesday we would do some typing. So it's, so it's like a good introduction to gain basic skills that you're going to need to really grow in the ICANN program. And then when you go on to secondary two and three, you're still in this stage of learning a bit of everything, but you're really mastering skills and you're learning a lot about the software. So you're, you go more in depth, more in detail to really uh, get to know all that you're acquiring as knowledge, which is uh, really fun because uh, this isn't stuff that you would learn anywhere else, which is uh, why it makes uh, the ICANN program really special. And unlike any other high school experience, uh, in the province or really elsewhere there, that there would be. 
And then when you go on to uh, secondary four and five, what I really appreciate is that each of your classmates or peers, really, we all know what we want to do. So I had some that were really into coding. They would love that and others in robotics, whereas I was more into video and graphic design. And I think afterwards, uh, we have these personal projects where we can really go in more in depth with what we love to learn and what we know we will do maybe later on in the, in the future or what these skills will bring us. So this personal project allows us to develop more to really do our own research, do our own digging into this uh, domain or this uh, particular thing, which is uh, something really incredible. And another aspect that I really liked about the ICAM program is that you create this sense of community with other individuals that have this one passion for technology. Because I remember in elementary school, uh, I would be one of the only or even maybe the few that would be interested in this sort of thing. But once you get into uh, ICANN, you're surrounded in a class of maybe 20 to 30 people, depending, where we all have this one uh, love or interest, which is technology, which is uh, something really interesting. And you get to make uh, connections and friends that you will have later on in life, which at least I know for, uh, for myself, I have friends that have lasted me because of ICANN. And this program also prepared me a lot for my higher education in CJEP or even just uh, to figure out what sort of career I want to do. Because without this program, I know I wouldn't have strived as much academically or school-wise. I wouldn't have been as involved. And it really, uh, it really led me to find what I want to do, what career path I want to follow, which is something really incredible. And I'm really grateful for the ICANN program for that. So uh, if ever you're in grade five, six, or even four, depending, and you're really interested in coming in the ICAM program, I'm telling you that it's a great place to be. You're going to learn a lot, and it's really a fun experience because it's unlike any other regular high school experience that you're going to have. So thank you. <laughs>